Hi, welcome to the SWIFT Education Center, the overview for the SWIFT Fidelity Integrity Assessment, or SWIFT FIA. Today we're going to spend about 15 minutes overviewing the SWIFT FIA, or Fidelity Integrity Assessment. Here's our agenda. First, we're going to talk about the purpose and why SWIFT FIA may work for your school and leadership team. Second, we're going to provide an overview on what is SWIFT FIA. Third, we're going to give some few examples on how to administer SWIFT FIA, and then we'll give you some resources, and you can contact us if you have any further questions. Why SWIFT FIA? First, SWIFT FIA is useful to help teams examine the current status of their implementation efforts. Second, it helps school leadership teams and leadership team members to capture their perspectives. And finally, it helps inform teams when making multi-tiered system of support implementation decisions. You may be familiar with the SWIFT framework. Here we have five domains and 10 features. You'll see on the left administrative leadership, integrated educational framework, family and community engagement, and inclusive policy structure and practice. At the top, we have MTSS, or multi-tiered system of support. SWIFT FIA has 22 items. As I just overviewed, there are five domains and 10 features. For each feature, SWIFT FIA has two items, with the exception of the MTSS domain and the inclusive academic instruction and inclusive behavior instruction features. Those have three items each. In total, there are 22 items on SWIFT FIA, each scored a 0, 1, 2, or 3. FIA is a self-assessment completed by a school leadership team, and it is conducted two to three times per year. First, we recommend that it's completed in September or October at the beginning of the academic year. It may also be completed after winter break, so typically in January. And then we recommend it's completed at the end of the year or prior to annual planning. Typically, this is usually April or May. You may want to have an external facilitator. This could be somebody who is a part of the school leadership team, for instance, an assistant principal, an instructional coach, a classroom teacher, or it could be an LEA or district representative that could serve as an external or outside facilitator. We recommend that the participants in this self-assessment include school leadership team members. A school leadership team functions a little bit differently than the administrative leadership team and typically does include administrators, but also classroom teachers, specialized and generalized educators, uh, paraeducators, and family or community representatives. The first administration of SWIFT FIA typically takes an hour to an hour and a half. There are 22 items on SWIFT FIA, but it takes a little bit of time for teams to understand the item, the item components, and how to score and interpret the scoring based off the stages of implementation. However, subsequent administrations take less than an hour, and that's for two reasons. First, once we have a general understanding of what is on the, the FIA and how to interpret components and stages of implementation, it takes a lot less time. And second, once teams start to prioritize and choose where they want to address um, uh, their goals and setting um, priorities going forward, there's some items that we may move the needle or make progress on and other items that we've chosen not to address at this particular time. A facilitator, remember we said a facilitator could be a school leadership team member or an external uh, person like an LEA or district representative. We recommend that you have a hard copy of FIA for each participant. And we're all about saving paper um, at Swift Education Center. However, with the SWIFT FIA, it's something that is really great to have a tangible example in front of you, projected onto the wall, be able to take notes and have dialogue about the item and the item components. So we really recommend that you print a copy of it for each participant. We also recommend that you may want to assign some team members, somebody to be a note taker. And you'll see here in a little bit when uh, we are talking about some of the items, I'll serve as a note taker. And then you may, may also want to have somebody who's the scorer or data entry, and we'll give you a, a data tracking tool to help you do that. So somebody who's going to upload those scores for us. I'm going to turn it over and we're going to talk about the four stages of implementation, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So as Dan said, the SWIFT FIA is scored based on the stages of implementation. Your team will be discussing which components of each item are in place, and this discussion will help you determine how you will score the item. 
If, an item, if a school does not have in place any of the components they item and no action plans are currently planned or in progress at the time, the team is in the stage of laying the foundation. This doesn't necessarily mean that the school hasn't been discussing the current status or the need for implementation. They may even be having discussions to identify existing strengths and opportunities and the degree to which the item description meets the needs of their school or even exploring options for how the item could meet the needs of their school. But if they're currently not, if they currently do not have any of the items in place, they would be in the laying the foundation stage. So as you can see, you could still be doing a lot of work and a lot of discussions around something, but be in the laying the foundation stage. If a team is, has a clear plan and is actively working on putting in place the components of the, this item, they would be the, in the installing stage. So in the installing stage, you may be working on some components of the item or even all of the components of the item, but it's clear that your team has clear plans in place to develop the feature and they have personnel assigned and responsible for carrying out the planned tasks. If this is happening, then you are in the installing stage. If a school has in place all of the implementation components and is now working to refine and improve upon them, then you are in the implementing stage. The implementing stage is where transformation efforts are starting to make systemic changes. This means that you have all of the implementation components in place to score a two to show that you are implementing the item. To score a three, sustaining school-wide implementation, your school would have all of the components in place, but also be working to make efforts to ensure that they are fully integrated and well-functioning. The school maintains and improves skills through the system, and their overall effectiveness is monitored, and components for ongoing implementation are revised to improve contextual fit when necessary. So that means to score a three, sustaining school-wide implementation, not only is the school implementing all of the components of the item, but they're also monitoring those to make sure that they're effective and in place and reviewing and revi revising as needed. So let's talk about it, what that would look like using an example. We're going to look at item 2.1 from SWIFTVIA. This item is education, coaching, and learning. The item says our school provides sufficient professional learning and instructional coaching to improve teaching and learning. So if I was going to do this with the school leadership team, I would read that item and then I would have a discussion with the member, members of the school leadership team about what components are in place. So for my school leadership team, when I look at these items, the first component says that educators in our school receive instructional coaching on the use of research-based practices within their first two years of teaching and ongoing as indicated through data or upon educator request. So with the school that I teach at, this is in place because we do have instructional coaching in the form of mentors provided for all new teachers within their first year of teaching. Also, if an educator would like, there are instructional coaches provided from the district in both literacy and math. They're ab available based on either need, if an administrator decides that um, this would be something that would helpful, or if an educator just says, I would really like some coaching around uh, the new reading curriculum, that would be provided to the educators upon request. So Allison, as note taker, what I'm hearing is uh, I'm taking notes here on the right side and I'm hearing that we do have mentors that are provided for all new teachers within their first two years. We have literacy and mathematics coaches um, that are available from the district and we can request coaching supports on uh, based on data or if we just say that we're something that we're interested in. Does that sound accurate? Yes, that sounds accurate. So I would definitely mark that that component of that item is in place. That is one thing that we do have in place at our school. I would also say that the coaching includes modeling, demonstration, support, and feedback in the classroom. So if I request a literacy instructional coach to come to my classroom, they will model lessons for me, they will provide support, they'll observe me teaching a lesson, and then meet with me afterwards to have discussions about what they saw happening and to provide support and feedback on how I could be making changes within that. And so I feel like the coaching that we have available at the school is very supportive and includes all of those components. So I would say that's in place as well. So I'll check that box also. So the next component of this item is that our school provides professional learning to all staff upon request or need identified by data and includes input from school stakeholders. Currently in my school the professional learning is really um, based on district level 
it's already set. I don't think we have a lot of say in that or the administrator just kind of determines the professional learning for the school year. But I don't think as a staff member I could request specific professional learning. And I don't know of any data sources that are being used. They're, the principal may look at data sources, but I don't know about this. So I feel unsure about whether I could say that component is in place. So I would think for that one, since I'm not really sure, we do have some professional learning, and but really the only people that go to it are teachers. I wouldn't say that all staff are included in that professional learning. I know that my paraeducator does not attend um, our school-wide uh, faculty meetings and the professional learning that happens there. So I would not feel comfortable saying that that item component is in place. Okay, so for that I, I summarized that professional learning is typically decided by the district and the calendar is set ahead of time by administrators and we do not believe that all staff are included because in some of the colleagues you work with like paraeducators they don't attend some of the professional learning opportunities uh, you do. Does that sound accurate? Correct. That does sound accurate. Okay. So over here on the left, we see that we have two components. The first two components, we did say that we have those in place, but we do not have the third component in place. If we're looking in the middle column at the stage of implementation, how do you think you would score this or how do you think we would score this item? So I would not say that we're at the laying the foundation stage because we do have um, some plans in place and we are installing some components of this item. Uh, I would not say that we're in the implementing stage because we do not have all of the components in place. We are not in the sustaining stage because we do not have all the components in place and we're not monitoring them for effectiveness. So I would say that we're at the installing stage because we do have some components in place. We are acting on defined and clear plans. We do have uh, defined and clear plans around coaching. So I would say that we are in the installing stage. Okay. Allison did a really nice job facilitating item 2.1. Let me review some of the uh, practices that she did during item 2.1. Because if you're a person listening to this training and you may be a district representative or somebody that's at a school site leader, you should be able to do this type of facilitation uh, with your school leadership team. So the first thing Allison did was she read the item aloud and the item components which is that left bar, that left side of the page for each particular item. So she read the item and then she read the three item components. We may wanna pause and have the participants, which in this case are the school leadership team members, see if there's any questions. Uh, sometimes there may be some words, terminology, or clarification points that we wanna make sure everybody's on the same page. Then as a group, we're gonna to wanna to dialogue. Do we have a shared understanding about the item components and what it's asking? If we are not in agreement, there is a section in the bottom right of each item page, and it's called the how do you know section. The how do we know section is intended to help us see some evidence examples and some sources that we may reference, and those may include things like team meeting minutes, uh, documentation, it may include job descriptions or intervention uh, decision rules, things that we do that are on record and everybody knows about that help us know if we are or are not uh, obtaining those item components. Something that Allison also did was she polled group members to say, are we in agreement on which of the item components are and are not in place? As I took notes, we kind of summarized and checked those boxes that said, yes, those are in place or no, we do not think those are in place. Finally, what Allison did is she scored the item based on the stage of implementation. And previously for item 2.1, we identified that we had two of the components in place, but we did not have all of them in place. And so the score that we earned as a team was a score of one. I think it's just important to add here that the facilitator, when gathering this information, if all of the item components are in place, is, continue, is going to continue to have that dialogue and discussion with the team about whether they're doing things to sustain that beyond just implementation. Are they reviewing those? Because that would be the difference between a score of a two and a three. So the facilitator is really helping the group dialogue about which stage of implementation they're in based on what things they have in place. So another tool that we have available to support you when you're implementing a SWIFT VIA at your school is the SWIFT VIA tracking tool. This can be found at swiftschools.org on the resource shelf. 
The SWIFT via tracking tool can be used by the scorer to enter the data that's collected while implementing the SWIFT via. It can be entered on an Excel spreadsheet that's located at swiftschools.org in the resource shelf, and the spreadsheet will automatically create charts that can be used by your team to have discussions about what items are in place. You can use the SWIFT via tracking tool as a facilitator to then debrief with the team. You can pull those scores up immediately after the uh, data entry scorer has entered the scores on the SWIFT via tracking tool, and you can immediately display the graphs and, and show what scores the team agreed upon. That helps your team determine what you're doing well, what the strengths are, what are maybe some areas of opportunity. You can also look at this data in conjunction with other data that you've collected to see how it aligns with other implementation data, such as Swift Fit data, maybe staff surveys or climate or culture data. And then you can share the results with your school stakeholders. If you have any questions, you can contact us at swift at ku.edu. Good luck completing your SWIFT FIAs. Thank you.